It is a beautiful day here in Palmer, Alaska. We've got the mountains out behind us, absolutely beautiful. 2-3 Uniform is in the hangar. She is a Cessna 172 that I've been modernizing over the last few years. And over the last few days, she is getting a Garmin Autopilot. So in this video, I wanna take you through and show you the mystery behind the magic. What does it take to install one of these Autopilots? What is it like? How do they retrofit these old airplanes? This is a 63 into being something new and modern. I'm gonna tell you the why behind this, but we're also going to get into some nitty gritty details on how this works, getting to see these awesome technicians go through this process. So let's go installing a Garmin Autopilot on 2-3 Uniform, a 1963 172. I've been modernizing this Cessna 172 behind me. This is November 2423 uniform, and it's a 1963. What's really cool these days is that there's a lot of equipment out there, modifications for modernization of these aircraft where you can bring them into the 21st century in a really big way. So a few years ago, this would have been 2021, I flew 23 uniform all the way down to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. This wasn't during AirVenture. And we did a huge modernization of the panels and really got the airplane IFR certified, got a beautiful panel. And since then we've done some other things like some interior stuff like that. But it was a really big process to fly all the way down there. Of course, it's a long way. It was about 3000 miles through Canada. Uh, we ended up going down in the winter time and then coming back in the springtime, but just such a huge journey. And then of course, installing all that stuff down in Wisconsin was a huge undertaking to get this airplane modernized. Now, when we did that, we did things like the GI-275s from Garmin, which are these really nice round dial, uh, high visibility, high color, high frame rate, or high frequency, I guess it would be high refresh rate, uh, displays that you can put in these old airplanes and and really get some some modern capabilities. So we did that, got an IFR GPS. It, it's just a really nice panel. It's all connected to Garmin Pilot EFB so we can send flight plans back and forth. So lots and lots of features. Took a lot of time doing that. However, during the time, we had to leave out one major thing that we didn't have the option uh, at the time of doing and that is a Garmin Autopilot. Now a Garmin Autopilot is really cool because what it does is it will not only relieve the load, say in IFR conditions for a pilot and even on long, long cross countries, really wish I had the Autopilot flying down and back from Canada or, or to, uh, to Wisconsin through Canada. Uh, that would have been really nice there, but um, it's just a really big, kind of like, almost like a co-pilot for IFR. It's not something you lean on as a crutch, but it's just there to help out and kind of take the edge off. So really, really cool piece of equipment. It's called a GFC 500 Autopilot from Garmin. It's a digital autopilot. I'll explain that in a little bit. And essentially what it does is it controls the control cables in the airplane the way you want it to. So you have really precise flight. Uh, really, really impressive. We're talking like airline level impressive. It's very, very cool. In a 1963-172. So what's interesting is Garmin has an R&D facility in Oregon and they have to take every single model that they get approved and they have to go through the process to get that model approved. So they literally got my model of airplane uh, since we had done that panel project and they went through and found out exactly how to retrofit this autopilot to that model. Every airplane's different, even between different 172s. So they had to figure out how the brackets would be installed, how the hardware would be installed. And so that when these guys get the autopilot, it's very straightforward. They have all the instructions really well laid out and they can just get to work essentially. So I'm going to go through now and kind of walk through the hangar and show that process to you guys and just explain it in my terms, which aren't super technical, but I think will be helpful for you in layman terms, how this thing is working and how it will benefit my flight school, my students and anyone that flies this airplane. 
So it's a, a very, very cool thing. I've always wanted to see behind the scenes on this. And now we get to peel back the curtain and see exactly what that looks like. So let's jump in the hangar and we'll start to look at some of those things. Uh, there's something else going on here in the meantime in that we are doing the annual inspection as well so you can see that the engine behind me is opened up for uh, getting the annual done so cody who is uh, steve's son steve owns the shop and runs the shop here uh, cody is learning to be a mechanic works really well here tell i can tell he's done a lot of this before so he's been doing the annual i've seen today him go through all the different wheels on the airplane uh, service the the strut the oleo strut on the nose gear and that was a process gets really dirty and grimy in alaska um, all year long but um, it being winter time it got really grimy since last we did it so that was a lot of work he also did the oil change and the airplane is already opened up anyway there's lots of panels open on the airplane so they can expect all the cables and pulleys and things and so you have these little panels all over Cessnas and all over airplanes in general that you can inspect things. So that's been the annual inspection. That's kind of going on in the background, um, which I just find really interesting. I feel like I learn something every time I get to witness that process. So that's been cool to see. And always nice to get a really close up look at the airplane while things are all torn apart. Um, even from the untrained eye myself, just to get a deeper look, uh, it's comforting and, and nice to see that. What's really cool about this is this clamp here goes on the existing roll cable and this servo actuates the existing roll cable for roll commands on the autopilot so pretty ingenious so i've spent a lot of time at this workstation today this is where john someone else that works with these guys was working on the pitch and the pitch trim servos and it was a very interesting process because uh, as you'll see in the tail here in a second there's this brace that both of the autopilot servos go on and again like i said when they go through and do the r d for these autopilots they have to fit it exactly to the airplanes they're working with so what's really cool for these guys is they don't have to think about that stuff they get these kits and they're all prepared and ready with the brackets. And so there was this prefabricated bracket that the servos go in and it allows them to essentially just put the servos in there. They riveted it to the top and the bottom of the airplane. And then they end up running the control cables through there. Um, and it's all, it's all set up. So, Kind of what I thought was going on with autopilots, which was corrected today in my mind. What I thought was going on was they would actually like remove control cables and, and mess with control cables quite a bit. That's actually not what's, what's happening. They're generally, to my understanding, they're using clamps on the existing cables to just pull those cables back and forth when they need to actuate them. So it's a pretty interesting process to see the ingenuity that Garmin had when they created these autopilots, when their engineers created these autopilots, because it's very straightforward. And um, I don't know, just makes a lot of sense to me that that would be a good way to do things. Just trying to assemble as much as possible. Before you get in there. On the bench, yeah. And I'm probably gonna wait until he's off the jack too. So yeah, that makes sense. I'm not rocking it around. And usually I just set these cables with how they need to be and then zip tie them so they don't come unraveled. That one, it's because you use the existing pitch trim. I see. Cable, and then you just add a link. Gotcha. So it extends it for that wrap, and then it'll sh sh slide. Wow. <clears throat> so John has been in the back here in the tail all day long, and I have some pretty cool footage because we have this little inspection panel here where we can see him inside. 
and he's been installing that bracket and uh, it, it's like this again this vertical brace that goes up and down um, I'll show you video here in a second but these are the rivets where it goes so right here there's like a, a brace right here and then the vertical piece that goes down and so now you can see that footage over the top of the video and now he's in there working on that and getting those control cables set up so that when the autopilot communicates to the system, tells it certain inputs, it sends those signals to the servos, pulls the cables exactly how the digital autopilot knows how to do it, and actuates those things. So really cool. I mean, just really, really cool. So coming around here to the other side of the airplane, we've got where the roll uh, servo is right here in line and roll control that well the ailerons of course control the roll so this would be the aileron cable that's coming out here um there are some panels here in which they had access to get in there uh had to do some modifications to the size of the hole and there's a bracket they had to fit in there and so i'll show you some of that process now um, steve was working on that most of the day and yeah just like i said they put the servo in there and then they put the clamps on and so that servo when it's getting the signal will essentially just pull those cables along and actuate it it doesn't have to pull them a lot as steve was telling me just a little bit back and forth is all it needs uh, because when you look at what it's like to control an airplane in the roll position it really doesn't take a lot of roll to get it to move just a little bit goes a long way um, i think because just the control services are so far out there that a little bit goes a long way that's how i would explain it so these guys are now going through and installing the cabling that needs to go in um, and the way i would explain it is there's a gmc a mode controller in here that's what garmin calls it it's essentially the brains of the system and what it does is takes the the information you want it to do so the the mode you want it to follow it interprets that, sends that signal to the servos through a bunch of um, a CAN bus. And the way that was explained to me is uh, a couple of wires. He said it's like half an ethernet is how he explained it to me. Um, and sends that information through the wires to then go to the servos and then they actuate. It's doing all that digitally, which is a really important distinction because autopilots aren't new. They've been around for a long time, but now that they have software they can drive the hardware they can tell that how much to bank how much to do something and there's a lot of uh, advantages to that really smooth controls smooth in and out of turns um, just makes it a dream to fly and uh, a really nice process so i'm going to end up going through on a totally different video and i'm going to show you guys how to use the autopilot and that'll be just a whole thing of its own because that's a different process but um, just to explain it again, there's a mode controller or the brains, which is that nice panel you see in the airplane. And you tell it to what to do. It sends those signals out to the servos and then that controls the cables and moves them along. That's a gross, gross oversimplification of what the process is like because there's a lot of software engineering that went on behind the scenes to drive that digital autopilot so it's not exactly just that simple there's a lot going on with the instruments and and the whole ecosystem of the avionics as well but i just think it's really impressive because this airplane now is going to be able to fly on rails um, really precise control inputs from the autopilot to hold a perfect heading hold a perfect altitude hold perfect airspeed climbs or descents um hold approaches even it, it does a lot of really amazing things and that's not even to mention the huge safety features that come along with these autopilots which is the electronic stability and protection system which is called esp for short it's essentially hey we have this autopilot it kind of knows if you're doing too much to the airplane may even know if someone's getting disoriented and the airplane is turning upside down or, or banking too hard or climbing too much and it'll actually add control forces upon the controls so that you don't do that um, so there's a lot of safety just built into it for that there's this little blue button just as an example we'll talk about this in another video 
I call it the magic blue pill, but it's this level button that if you got disoriented, you press that button, the autopilot will engage, it'll level the airplane. So just a huge, huge uh, safety thing that's very cool on these airplanes, and that comes with the autopilot. Now, um, obviously, I want to go through the process of modernizing the airplane, of bringing it into the 21st century. We've largely already started that, and uh, the whole panel has been done, but this autopilot waited. Why would I get an autopilot? But other than it being cool, like I just mentioned, um, it is a very cool thing to have. However, this gets us into a new category called TAA, or Technically Advanced Airplane. It requires a three-axis autopilot, MFD, PFD, and that time, just recently, it was, it was added to the commercial flight experience or aeronautical experience uh, regulation, so you can get TAA time instead of complex time. So that's really nice now. You don't have to find a retractable gear airplane. You can have an airplane like a G1000 or, or something like this that will actually qualify for that now. And you'll be able to log TAA time. This autopilot puts it over the top for that and it'll now be TAA. So a lot of added safety benefits to this, but obviously that's uh, good for the flight school. It can make a little bit more money, more convenient for the students because they can build that TAA time as they go along. And then when they get to their commercial, it doesn't matter anymore. So um, these guys are closing up. I'm gonna uh, close out this video now. So thanks for coming along. Make sure to like this if you liked it, subscribe to stick around and hit that notification bell. Um, I really like this sort of tech stuff. So I plan on sharing more of this in the future. And huge thanks to these guys here for doing this. If you wanna come check them out, I'll leave a link to their website in the description and you can uh, check out their shop if you're here in Alaska. Really impressed with their professionalism so far. They just get after it, they're working hard. It's been very cool to be here. Um, I feel energized just by osmosis being here with these guys. So they've done a great job so far and I think they really know what they're doing. So um, anyway, thanks for being here. Fly safe and until next time, throttle on.